me dancy welcome to the macro chat live show hey how are you doing i i am always dancing during that beginning part i just want you to know i can't, I can't help myself but i'm always dancing so that's so cool hey everyone this i am janice sullivan and am i going the wrong way wrong way this is ad he's the producer of the show and guess what before we go before we really get into the show i am so honored stewart is in the chat if you guys don't know who stewart wood is you gotta check him out because he's going to be on our show not this month but next month and he has some amazing amazing youtube videos on macro photography you guys he rocks Sweet. So welcome. i can learn something i always like <laughs> yeah. learning something Oh my gosh. Yes. Oh my gosh. I love. So uh, we have a great show today, but if you guys are new, this is a show just for close up macro micro photography. And we do chat about, I mean, the things that we talk about really do hone in into the macro world, but some of the things you can use if you're other photographers, excuse me, ma'am, I have a question. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mike, but but even though it is centered around all of those things, yeah. this is a show that anyone who is into photography can learn from because we talk about composition and color and all sorts of editing things and all of that stuff. So while it's centered around macro and that's what we show, um, we do talk about, you know, the whole everything photography that we can think of. So. Yes. Yeah. And that's why AD is here too, because he helps me. Now, most of you guys that are here, you guys rock. So Elise is here and Jan is here and Otta is here. And I'm sure Art will be here too. Yep. So this show is every other Thursday. You could see it. So I produce uh, videos every Thursday, but this show is every other Thursday. And every month, we have one photographer that is that specializes in macro photography. And so mark your calendar because in two weeks we have Mitchell Wu. Yes. Holy moly. I know. Holy moly. It's he's exciting. So yes, he's a toy photographer and he's huge. He's worked so hard. Um, he's over here in LA. He's not from California, but he has worked so hard to get his work noticed and he's rocking it. I mean, the toy companies are all over him and yeah. he is coming on next show. I'm so excited. So mark your calendars. Cause it's going to be a blast. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of, a lot of inspiration in this that you may not have thought of to do or to try. And that's, that's, this, it's one of those shows where it's going to be something a little different. And um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited because yeah. I have a lot of these toys that I would like to take photos of. And um, even if it's just models that I'm 3D printing or anything like that, and I think this is really going to help. Um, yes, and he's so, so creative, too. Yeah. So it'll give you some great ideas for sure. I'm like, wow. And he's on Instagram showing the behind the scenes, which is a lot of fun, too. Awesome. Jan, yeah. you're on your way home from the grocery shopping. Just don't be typing in your car now. <laughs> I don't want no accident because <laughs> you're watching us. That's right. <laughs> you be safe. Oh, my gosh. You are so rocking it. And if I, oh, there's Art. He's here. Hey. Art is here. Woohoo. Art, I, I was inspired by you. And this is, and so I have a couple of videos that I'm going to be sharing in the chat when we get to your work. So Art has given us some awesome coins. And so we'll be checking that out. So today is a feedback loop day. And this is where we, we actually check out all the images that you submit mm -hmm. and we give you feedback, me and AD and homework. And the loop is where you would share your homework which art has and so has baz baz has some work he's probably going to be here too so he couldn't he couldn't get through the portal thing i don't know but anyways long story short it's really cool he's got some water refractions cool. so before we get started let's do the sponsor so then i can get my um act together with lightroom and <laughs> do all that fun stuff How's all right that? here we go <laughs> Ready to accomplish your macro photography goals? Our SJP membership will keep you on track, hold you accountable for your goals, and teach you new techniques. This program provides you the value of a college course, 
with the fraction of the price. For more information, head on to membership.sullivanjphotography.com. It's time to focus on your goals to get you to where you want to be. So don't miss out. Don't miss out. Don't miss out because we're rocking it right now. That's right. Listen, <laughs> listen, listen to Miss Janice. Hey, um, can people still submit images, by the way, to the show? Oh, yeah. You know what? There's a you go to uh, Sullivan J Photography and at the very top to uh, there is you. I think you put it down below, but at the very top, I have a macro chat link that's on the menu. Mm -hmm. Just go there. Like Stuart's going to be on there when, you know, next week we'll have Mitchell. So I'm going to put Mitchell in there. So it's all about the macro show. And then there's a link that says submit images. Cool. And you I mean, A.D. hooked it up. So whenever you guys want to do it, it's on a first come, first serve basis. So just throw them in there. It goes into a Dropbox, and then you have to type in information about your image. And it'll ping me, and then I know that you've gotten it. So do it, you guys. It's a lot of fun, and you're gonna see everybody that we um, share with you know work. You get inspired, and it's just we do not rip it up. It's all about fun and um, learning new things. So yeah do awesome. it for sure cool yeah so should we go let's see if there's any questions oh on her way to grass love toys oh she's jan says she's not driving yes good. i saw that <laughs> sigh of relief <laughs> that's good um yeah let's go ahead and go to the critique segment and we will rock it right now all right hey look I got it. I'm ready. I'm ready. So look, you know what, Ada? I, Ad and I were thinking that we already talked about this image, but I was looking at the shows. I went through three different shows and did not see this. So we're just going to do it again because there's so many people that love to photograph cute little spiders and goodies like, you know, critters. So this one, we're just going to go for it again if we've done it. So what we, what you wrote about this is that um, you said the beauty of its placement and the number and shape of spider webs made me take some of these pictures. I made a snoot from my A4 paper on uh, that he built and put it on his camera flash. So basically, AD, what he's going for here, AD could not get to these images. So he's seeing these right off the bat everyone because we had a little i i thought he was seen in a different location long story short this is this is fresh for ad but he did think that we might have talked about this but anyways let's talk about it again because there's so many spiders mm -hmm. i don't know about you guys but we have tons of spiders i know you and england and all of them are getting cooler we're still hot so we have tons of spiders going on right now yeah it's so, easy to get uh, pictures of them when it gets cooler because they all come in the house <laughs> yeah, and they're tight. Here in and the Northeast, cold. it's like, yeah, when it starts to get cold, you just start looking around because everybody and their brothers like in a corner somewhere. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. And this one almost looks like a brown widow, but it's not because it doesn't have the widow in the back, mm. um, back in. But I love that he, look at how sharp he has it right in here. You can see the details of the yeah, spider, which so is really cool. Interesting to me that the, this is, we're actually looking at the bottom of the spider. This is the bottom. Um, because of the way the legs are going. And, and so instead of looking at the top of the spider, which we right. normally do, um, mm -hmm. we're seeing the other side. Um, and that's an interesting perspective, I think. Um, it's, it's different from what we normally see. Um, it does take away uh, from the seeing the eyes of a spider like this, which is always like humanizes them a little bit and makes them a little bit more easy for some of us to deal with. Um, but the detail, yeah, the, I, I was going to say that at least the detail is, is excellent on the image. And I think that this kind of shows like, uh, you know, on the abdomen and stuff, it almost looks like, you know, it's another creature. It has a face. So mm -hmm. I think it's an interesting perspective. And I like the fact that he did something different uh, with that. And I think that stands out to me in this photo is that uh, the colors are nice. Um, the background, the choice of background colors, it goes well with the spider. It's not a, you know, it doesn't detract away um, from that. What What are your thoughts? Yeah, you know what? And you know what's interesting? Normally, I don't like um, creatures like it's smack in the middle, but I don't mind this mm -hmm. in the middle because of the web. 
Well, it's, because it's his symmetrical. story is about the yeah. web. Yes. Yeah. And you know me and symmetric. I mean, yep. that's I'm all over that. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that it's definitely different and I like it. I definitely um, feel that, you know, if we were to get up close like this and, you know, print it, I would probably try to be careful a little bit about chromatic aberration. And Otta, I believe you know what that is. And I know, mm -hmm. Otta, you use Lightroom. So what I would suggest is definitely ticket or manually mm -hmm. go in and use the little dropper in Lightroom and click on the chromatic aberrations mm -hmm. right in here, just because of printing purposes. Yeah. And I absolutely love it. I would do one more thing, Otta. See this guy right here that I love that it is part of it. Oh, you know what? Maybe not so bad. Never mind. When you go back like this, this is why yeah, I love getting up close. But if you printed it that, you would see it. But yeah. if you printed it, you would see it. So yeah. never mind. I just love that I the was, spider has like little feet holding on to like those little yes. wires, right? Like I'm just gonna hold on to those. That just amazes me. And I, I think too the the in case anybody else doesn't know about the chromatic aberrations, also known as fringing, which happens when the coating of a lens lets through certain frequencies of light and then reflects those back inside the lens, and then they end up getting through to the sensor. So they they make it past the filter. And what Janice is talking about, there's a little tool in Lightroom or just about any uh, program, Luminar has it too, where you can just defringe your photo and it'll take those frequencies of blue and, and sometimes purple or magenta, it'll take those and it'll, uh, it'll dissolve them. And I can see a little bit of the blue uh, in there as well. And I will tell you, only the most expensive of expensive lenses don't have chromatic aberrations and you can even force them to have uh that a little bit depending on where the light is when you shoot so um it's nothing yeah. it's not really a comment uh commentary on the lens itself it's mm -hmm. just it happens and uh if you print it you will see that blue will yeah. really stick out so yeah that's yeah and that's what's so cool about having the the software that yep. can clean that up because they know the problems that we have yeah it's pretty much a one-click thing too you just click on yep. it and if it doesn't go away when you say defringe it, you use a little eyedropper and you click on it and then poof, it's gone. And it's really it's nice. Vile, yeah, it, look, <laughs> it looks so cool. Yep. Okay, now here's his second image. And what um, he said he liked about this, and I didn't get it until I go get up close. That's why I feel like, Printing mm -hmm. macro huge is really cool because he says, I yep. like this very small. It feels like it has small grains that look like salt and sugar. Um, the anther is about one millimeter in size. And at first I didn't understand what he was talking about. But of course, when you get up close, like mm -hmm. my, look at that. Mm -hmm. Boom. So there's the, your sugar yeah, and salt. <laughs> and that kind of begs the question, do we want to crop it like that so that we can I mean, if that's the star of the show, this is why this is why I love talking about these type of photos because, and why we asked the question of what did you go for here? Because, yeah, I mean, if you printed this the size of a wall, you definitely would be able to walk right up to it and see, you know, that, and that would be very impressive. Um, but if you're gonna make, you know, and I will tell you, in my lifetime, I've maybe sold five photos that go on the size of a wall, and I'm talking about 90-inch photos. Most of the mm -hmm. time, people are wanting the little 8 by 12s or they want, you know, 16 by 24s. They really don't want anything much bigger than that. So we got to think yeah. about that, too. Um, if, if Is that strong enough for you to crop in on that and, and go f and show that super fine detail that you've captured? Um, because if it is your, you know, that is your star of your show, you really need to um, not allow uh, anything else, reflections or any of that kind of stuff that, you have in this photo you can't really let that stuff interfere with what is really impressing you the most so that's how we explore our creativity we you know you think about what how you explain your story to us when you're talking about your photos you know when you submit a photo you're going to say well i pressed the button because of this and i wanted to do this and i was looking you know for this detail and when you read that back it's going to tell you something a little bit about your eye and what you were going for and that's how you discover yeah your creativity and what draws you and that you're constantly refining that you're oh i'm going to get closer pictures of the stamen and the flower now because i really want to see what goes on down there and next thing you know you're taking you're the first person taking electron microscope shots of and selling you know 
hundreds of copies of photos. You know, that's that's how it works. If you ask Don yeah, Kamarechka sure. about his process or, or any Alex Wild or any of these guys about their, um, or ladies, about, about their process, they didn't mm-hmm. start out doing that one thing. They found right, it, right? right. right? And yep, so exactly. I think this is part of that process, and I think it's really worth talking about. Um, um, because, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's not just a critique of the photo. It's really about uh, the creativity and, and uh, right. helping that out. And what, and what you want out right. of the image. Absolutely. That's the main thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I'm yeah. Sorry. Okay. No, no, no. It's good. <laughs> I was just going to go to Brian's because I think this is this is beautiful. I love um, – I. You know, he. I understand what he was going yep. for, um, yep. and I would totally have. Um, I mean, that because just this blows right me there, away, right? Yeah, I yeah. mean, I want to look at that too. So. Yep. Yep. So yeah. uh, this is this is the image for me, but you know, that's that's what he was saying. Now I love sure. black plexi, so that's a whole different story. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna talk about Brian's images, cool. and then we will do a. Uh, break like we always do and nice. then come back so brian is in um we're going to take this one first i'll do my second one that i really liked okay. uh in the second the second image sure. but brian is says that he presses the shutter button because he loves surprises the inherent macro and i'm uh press it in manual mode because i don't usually shoot quite Uh, within the normal standards i don't think most macro people do do manual to tell you the truth because it's a different um, beast it says he processes and capture one because i like to bring out as much of the hidden divine as i can i usually do a bit of work in black and white to heighten the contrast i do that too behind the scenes if i want to do um, add more details i put a black and white behind there you don't know it Mm -hmm. um so do uh he says he likes do a tweak or two on the grain he uses layers to bring out specific colors textures and brightens various shadows he's used a tamron 90 millimeter 272 mm-hmm. e lens iso is 100 and his f-stop is 14 to 18 because these are two different images that we're going to see today and he usually shoots about a negative three um, in the exposure range a negative point three so uh the longer the exposure the greater the detail unless and then he's saying unless you push it too far he's okay so now he's talking about the daisy so let me see what he says on the bottom oh here's the hibiscus so the daisy was f16 which you guys will see the this is a droopy red hibiscus uh, filament with anthers a little fruit Mm -hmm. is what he calls it at f16 at four seconds i shoot because um so you know sometimes we i think what's happening when we say hey why do you shoot why what is the story sometimes i think this is a good example that i feel like they're they're feeling i think people think that we're asking about in general Mm -hmm. you know like Like technique over 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 creativity or um, yes. purpose or purpose, right? Because purpose. that's the thing that we really want to know is we want to know your purpose. Like, mm-hmm. uh, you know, um, because the camera settings are great, but I mean, it's the situation, the, the light, we don't know any of that. We, and in that, you know, I can see that you obviously know how to operate your camera. Not a problem. Yeah. So you yeah. read, the, you read the manual, you're good. <laughs> we got that. Yeah. Yeah. He um, just says that he uses yeah. it for his uh, to create individually in his mm-hmm. blog and stock images. Oh, okay. You know, that stock Im- so a sure. lot of this goes on his blog, which is okay. good to know. Yep, absolutely. Um, and yes. and that would depend on the content of your blog. So a lot of times, like, um, mm-hmm. you know, bringing back Alex Wild again, because I've been following Alex for a while, um, you know, he might put something <laughs> on, awesome. he might put something on his blog where he's talking about, a specific feature of an insect and so he'll only it won't be an art kind of photo right it'll look amazing because it's alex but he'll be focusing on maybe a leg or an antenna or something like that um on a bug and but then he also has you know his post where he's going for the fine art look of the creature and that's a completely different thing so if this is what you know this was he was showing a scientific like I'm talking about, like how this fascinates me, or using it as an example, that's perfect. I mean, it it's doing its job perfectly. If it's meant to be 
composed as art or something you know of that then we have other things to talk about and that's what we need to know about your yeah. photos otherwise we we don't you know photos can be good and then they uh -huh. you know in one thing and they can be bad in another or not bad but yeah. you know you know what i'm saying yeah. they should they the need more of right. things yeah so yeah it's an interesting like discussion it is a discussion. I, I would like to just talk about this a little bit because sure. um, my blog is like the life of where, how I've worked hard on my blog right. years and years to get top 20. Yep. And, and it's because I do use the images for the blog post, just like you were saying, mm -hmm. AD. Um, but so I'm talking to Brian right now and anybody that is writing a blog that is giving information, whether it's art or it's information like what AD was saying, scientific. The main, this is what he was talking about was the fruit, the main fruit. Mm -hmm. So with that said, your background is driving. I So I love the fruit. He's got it all mm -hmm. like rocking it. And it, it's a small, but I would change up the background. Yeah. And the reason why I would change up the background, because if I was writing about this, which most blogs is about that, um, the story of the fruit that you were talking about, I want to see that fruit really good. So that's why a lot of times I use a black background. And it's not for the artistic thing. It's because you can see the, the red and you'll be able to see the fruit better. So my suggestion is, is I, in my background, I have red velvet fabric that I just get at a fabric store. And that thing is with me everywhere because I write blogs all the time and I'm talking about certain things about what I've done. So what I suggest, Brian, you do is you use something, whether you wanna, I think, Black backgrounds a lot easier than working with a white background. And if it's because of the blog and you want to talk about that, I would suggest to try that. That's mm -hmm. my my homework to Brian. Yeah, don't let your so. background distract from your subject matter. That's mm -hmm. whether mm -hmm. it's art or not. And you know, if we, if you're making art, for you can tell a story with a background, and you can you can put a whole movie in a photo if you want to. Um, and I've seen some people do it. Um, where there's been seven or eight different photos that you, you know, you, you took seven or eight photos in one photo. You, man, you, you're, you're overworking here. As far as I'm concerned, I'm like, I would have taken a, all seven photos and there I have seven photos that I didn't have before. But they're putting yeah. them all in one, you know. Um, right, right, right. And I think that, yeah, I think with uh, this image, he's got, you know, the subject is, is fine. The background's just a little noisy as far as like there's some detritus back there. And when you start getting into, um, like I, I look at like flower photography a lot like product photography. In product photography, it's always about no distractions in the background because you know whether it be dust or anything like mm -hmm. that, you want to just eliminate that. It's not telling the story. It's not um, you know we're not writing a documentary here. Um, but if you're if you are, are are documenting this flower and you're talking about like every little detail of this flower, you were gonna leave in like these little, I see a couple of little white uh, strands here and things. You would wanna highlight those and talk about them if they're if they're mm -hmm. supposed to be there, if there's some function of the flower or maybe they're a bug or something is, you wanna talk about that obviously. Um, otherwise, if you're not gonna talk about that and it, and it doesn't really affect the flower's life or whatever your blog post might be about. And again, we're winging it here because I don't know. Um, then you would then you could eliminate that stuff clone it out get rid of it but definitely um, I'm with Janice on the background um, take the distractions out of the background for sure it's only it's going to help yeah. your blog post too trust me yeah I think yep. so definitely here's the second one which is really nice I mean I this is my favorite out of both yes. of them yes and um, it's really beautiful and so this would be a blog post yep. too I could see us I could see him writing about this right in here mm -hmm. 
Um, so, like, let's just say this is an example. I mean, this, it's right smack in the middle, but it's fine because he's, to me, it doesn't bug me because he's going to be writing about a blog post. He's got the pedals over here to the left, which is different from the right, uh, you know, the pattern. So I, I don't know. You, do you have some suggestions for him on this one? It looks, let me see if he, while you're talking about, let's see. Yeah, for, um, for me, um, I would have to know again, um, and this is why we ask the questions and why we ask mm -hmm. for the text, not just mm -hmm. to let Janice know that there's something out there to critique, but, um, and we say it every week. So in, in Brian's, as far as I know, fairly new. So um, we'll, we'll reiterate a little bit. Um, I don't know like what to look at here. So I can pick out the thing that's in focus to look at. Um, I personally, if it's in focus, I personally don't want it to be centered in the image unless you're doing a symmetry shot. Um, but there's mm -hmm. so many things that are, that are dotted here that are in focus that my eyes are going everywhere. Mm -hmm. So while I see the little fiddlehead there, which looks pretty cool, um, there's also this little like uh, feathery, like there's another version of it down in the lower right hand corner. And then we've got this beautiful leaf that's coming out with the red, which is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm all over this photo and not in a great way because I don't know where to look. Um, mm -hmm. For a blog post, if he's talking about multiple things about this flower, then it's fine. It's absolutely yep. fine. Don't get me wrong. Yep. But if yep, we're going, yep. th it seems like this is like going for more of an artistic shot because of the colors and the depth of field and all that kind of stuff. Then you've, yeah, it's, yeah, it's very tricky with flowers because you've got to get composition in there somehow. And flowers are very, they're very symmetrical and they're, you know, they're, they're kind of laid out in a certain way and, uh, and a lot of stuff bunched close together. So you either got to get super close and, you know, single things out or you've got to show more or. That's the tough thing, and that's one of the reasons why I don't shoot a lot of flowers is because it's too hard. You guys yeah, yeah. Uh, amaze me with it. Um, but oh, my I, gosh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I, I think it's... that something like this, um, you want to you wanna show, I, I think I'd want to see more of the flower here or zoom in tight so we can really see the structure of what's going on in that flower um, with that. And if that's his subject, I challenge you as part of your feedback loop to pluck that part of the, the flower out with the tweezers and make it a solo thing and zoom in on it and put it on a black background or, or with some other background and really compose it. Well, it's funny that you say that. Um, we, we could go back to us, Brian, oh. you did. Yeah, yeah, we could go back to us because those are great tips and everything. I totally love the, all the tips that you said, and it's true though because if it was artistic, we really didn't know what he was art. You know what you were saying. You were giving some great tips, but I have to tell Elise. So this is what I love about questions. Okay. You know, people ask questions like she she said, which was really smart. She says something about we were talking about compositional rules, and she's like, you know what? I don't really totally get it. And I said, you know what? I'm going to make you a series. <laughs> and, and, and because I like to explain things a little different, not just this is the rule of thirds and you just place your main subject there. And so I have uh, next week, at least I have the first compositional Ooh. and I have to say that I'll give you guys, because you're here with me rocking it full live. I had the same kind of issue kind of, of what, Brian had, and so I readjusted mm -hmm. the flower right. um, for the compositional rule that I'm going to be talking about with post-processing. Yep. And so that's what I'm going to talk about too. Sometimes you just shoot and you shoot because you say, oh, this is the rule, and then, but yep. the, sometimes that still doesn't work. <laughs> no, and, and, and the only reason why we always tout the rule um, is the rules of composition. And, here, and it, we're in a learning environment here, so I think it's important that we, mm -hmm. we talk about things that are important to learn. Composition yeah. is one of the things that 99% of the photographers out there miss. They just they either don't get it or, um, you know, they can take a beautiful photo, perfectly focused, color, tone, lighting, nailed it. But then the composition is like, where where's your story? Like, I, I'm like... Yeah, it's, it's a, you know, and I hate to say these words, but I end up with, it's a snapshot because, yeah. you, you know, I'm not seeing your soul in the photo and we don't take photos, we make photos. 
cameras take photos they just do whatever we tell them to so my whole thing is like i really think that learning composition and, and i'm not saying that every shot has to be composed in a rule because as you grow as an artist you will find unique and special ways to break the rules and yes. it, th th it will still make sense and um i got noticed originally because i didn't know composition and i was breaking the rules in a positive way and people were impressed by that and i didn't know it and i was like <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. They're like, you have a great eye. I can't believe how you set the shot. I'm like, I didn't set the shot up. I just took the shot. I don't know what you're talking about. But then I went and I learned. You know, I, I'm like, I need to know what these people are, are telling me and why things are, you know, why I'm doing what I'm doing. And um, yeah. and so now when I can't get a shot, when I'm like, man, I want to take a picture of this. I am so impressed by this, but I can't figure it out. I'll go back to those rules the basic rules of composition and I'll start there. And then my mind magically will fill in the blanks and I'll figure it out. Or, yeah. or maybe it's just good as a standard composition. Well, you know? the rules are, yeah, you know what? I love to learn the rules, like you were saying, because the rules work. They do and work. Yes, people, yeah. people like to break them too. Yep. And like you were saying, you yep. break them, but, um, I think when you're a beginner, you really should just do the rules first. Yeah, you, know? you have to break with purpose. So you're not yeah. that deep into your photos yet to know, like, when why, being... yeah, why yeah. I'm, why am I breaking the, the rule here uh, of thirds or whatever? Um, I might be wanting to make people uncomfortable. Okay, so, yes. so That's I may great... break. Yeah, I may break. Like a lot of my decay photos and my abandoned photos. That's where that's what I figured out I was doing is I was breaking those rules, but I was showing disturbing images to some people, but they were still beautifully photographed and people were impressed by the beauty. But then they were also like, I don't know why, like it's it, I look at it and I have a feeling and I'm not. And that was how I was doing it. And I didn't even know it. It was just, well, you know, this is some yeah, and this is something that people should know too. Well, your stuff is decay and abandonment, and yep. so like if like when you have a macro series, like I was starting to work on um, the a death series, that's something that you want to get people a little uncomfortable with. It's that's a fine right. art yep. statement. So that's where you would say, okay, do I really want to put this in the rule of thirds? You know, you don't have the thing too is yeah. like when I always. That's why, yeah. I mean, I have things that right now there is a creative checklist it's called my um my creative blueprint and it mm -hmm. basically is a blueprint a, a, a series of information that people can get from free on my website on how to be creative and it's just it, this is how I start with it and I work the steps and and when I'm in that realm of like oh my gosh i know all these rules and everything sometimes you just need to stop snap shooting and just really take some time and do these steps yeah. and it will help yeah. so anyways the businesswoman that i am you could still get it free go <laughs> right. to my go to my website sullivan j photography <laughs> <laughs> i'll poke that one in okay so let's go to the equipment because what we want to talk to you guys about is ad and i had a conversation about macro especially if you can't get the shot up close there is some amazing i'm going to talk about my tool and mm -hmm. then ad is going to talk about his tool because you can enlarge your images now which is so cool um in these software programs so say if you crop something small and you want it enlarged to be able to really see it back in the days only printing companies could do that Right. You know, and now these comp software companies are like, you know what, we're going to give that stuff to you. We're going to uh, somehow on one Topaz they they've worked it really good <laughs> on being able to do what the printing companies used to do back in the days. Right. Um, so this is really cool. So let's go to equipment and I am my computer seems to be OK. AD. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Here we go. <laughs> So Art was talking about gigapixels right now. Oh, yeah. He says, are you talking about gigapixels? Actually, mm -hmm. 
But I am showing you. Oh, you can go ahead and share my screen. It's a mess. It's okay. It's all good. You guys are all <laughs> Wasn't good. sure if that's where we we're going or not. Yeah, no, it's a mess. Um, but it's okay. So <laughs> this is this is on one raw, and um, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to share with you. Th these two is what I played with, but I'm going to share with you how easy it is to be able to take your image that's small. And I would love for you guys to do this if you're submitting images to me and you've cropped the hell out of it and you want us to critique it. Let's do this. If you could try this for 90 days, I think, on one gives it to you. So, yeah, yep. um, yeah, yeah everything so, we're talking about has free trials. So, free trials. You got to yep. do it. You got to do it. So, I want to show this picture. It's a little oversaturated. This is Kevin down here, guys. <laughs> Look at how cool he is down here. But this is just something fun that I did for Kevin. So, over here on the right, you can see it's 72. Well, well, Janice, where did Janice go? <laughs> Janice froze up. Oh, uh oh. Hold on there, Janice. We've got bad network problems. Hopefully, um, we're still broadcasting just fine here. It's uh, on your end. Is something's happening? The minute you go to show something to somebody. Oh, hold on. Are you still not back? I think we're broadcasting you okay. Guys. Everybody, Ooh. turn it off and back on again. Oh, are we okay? Yeah, Stuart. Uh, well, oh. no, no. We, we, whatever you opened <laughs> oh, up. Oh, hi, Stuart. <laughs> whatever you opened up just owned your connection and booted you, like, into the oh, stratosphere. Oh, see, that's what I was worried about. Yeah, oh, it, my gosh. So just so you okay. guys know, um, On One has a, a bunch of online... Uh, features that it uses your internet connect it'll work without an internet connect but it does use them to get presets and user presets and it also does uh, I think there's cloud storage it even does now which is really awesome so when she oh. opened that it probably um, yeah I'm oh that's probably what happened we were worried <laughs> about this you guys I don't know if I want to do this okay well we'll see if Give it, it a shot, gives we'll see it too much happens. Yes, yes. So I apologize. We were, we were both talking about this. So over here on the right, I was basically saying that it's a very small image. And, you know, especially when it comes to macro. Mm -hmm. And so I'm in resize now. And one thing that's really, really cool is that you can um, change your document size. No problem. Say if I wanted this now um you know 300 and we'll just go like 4000 let's just do it right now and let's see if it breaks mm -hmm. so um let's see so now it's look at see the how big it is so i'm going to that's as easy as that you can sharpen the image if you'd like to sharpen i'm kind of worried about doing that and then i do want to suggest though that when you guys increase the size if you have something very soft like right this is the reason this is the reason why i brought this image in because it has a lot of texture but if you have something that's soft add some grain and it will get rid of those banding areas so you know if you see those banding this is what why they have the grain in this section because you're increasing it and then um, then you can go down here and you can share it print it export it all that stuff i'm actually going to cancel this because i'm afraid i'm going to show you an example though, okay <laughs> i'm afraid let's see all oh right, my god fine. okay let's go back here i just want to make sure so these I just in case something was like going to happen here. Let me show you. So this was, um, let's see what size this one is. Okay. Okay. That's the big one. Hold on one sec. I want to show you. This is the original. Okay. okay. And as I click on it, you could see it's not really going up. It doesn't you know expand. what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's so small. It's only six dimensions over here to the right is 610 by 963 and so i went crazy just to share with you guys i did the steps that i was telling you guys before and i increased this to 2700 to 4262 I mean that's crazy so it i didn't so that you're going to see a little bit of 
it's soft, but see how it it has to hold on. It will get better. It's because the computer. This is actually pretty sharp. Right now it's showing, showing some grain, but it's because the computer's trying to work with me being online. But I'm telling you, see what the difference is? You can actually increase. Don't do that. <laughs> it's killing you. <laughs> oh, Janice. <laughs> Hello? She's going to, like, completely drop her entire computer if she keeps this up. <laughs> oh, no. Hello? Uh oh, am I okay? I'm done. No, you're... <laughs> Can you go to... Am I okay? Oh, yeah. my God. Yes, you're that's back why. now. I'm telling you, that's why I got off. You could go ahead and share us. If well, Are we going to talk about the other stuff? Well, you're going to talk... Yes, but I thought you were going to show Topaz. I am going to... I, I don't have anything to show, but I am going to... Oh, I am going to uh, add a source here so that y'all can see it. Um, right now, they're... they're yeah, they're seeing the gray, the gray background. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. Hold on one second. Let's just add. We'll add in a source so you guys can see this. I'm just gonna do a quick window capture. So don't steal my password, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I was. I'm telling them my computer could. Oh, I was just saying, laugh out loud. My computer couldn't handle it. No, it couldn't. All right. So. <laughs> Guys, this is, um, so I've, over the years, um, I'm not going to try to run any software because I know that, um, I know that Topaz is so darn powerful, uh, that if I did this, it probably stopped the universe or something. Anyways, um, <laughs> so I've had, I've been an affiliate of Topaz for the last 10 years and I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. When I first started getting into photography i reached out to every company i knew and said hey i'm a photographer and i really would like it if you sponsored me and i'm sure all of them went what who you're an idiot and and, <laughs> and so and so um but topaz got back in uh, in touch with me and they're like sure man we have an affiliate program why don't you sign up and i signed up and they sent me all their software and I tried it all out and went, yeah, I'm never going to use any of this stuff. I really don't like it. I really did. Oh, That's, no way. You yes, did it? No, I didn't. I, I didn't. I did not like this. Well, let, let me just put it out there. Nick Software <laughs> was out at that point in time. Lightroom was getting all the super features at that time. Yes. Um, there was just so much other stuff that I used that I just, Topaz just didn't do it for me. Their interfaces mm -hmm. were big and clunky. And I was just like, you know what? I'm just not into it. But... I have to say, um, I've moved on from Adobe. I'm now I'm a Luminar guy. I use Luminar and I use Darktable for my for my cataloging and all that kind of stuff. Topaz has come out with this new artificial intelligence modeled software, and this whole suite is off the charts better than anything that is available from any company right now. Period. And you can write that down. Uh, it, and go go try this stuff out for free. I'm telling yes, you right now, I have never seen a denoise program work as good as this. I've never seen a sharpen program that was able to stabilize my damn camera and take blur out when I screwed up the shot. Um, I have never I have never seen uh, the gigapixel be able to blow up an image so large yet lose nothing. It actually looks sharper than it did when it was the regular size i'm i'm not kidding you one bit and, and i cannot demonstrate this stuff on the computer and i'll tell you why it takes basically all of my graphics cards processing in order to process the files now this doesn't hurt your computer but it does take it is a demanding software but the results are definitely worth it i just want to show just a few things from the website you guys can do this yeah. yourself but I kind of want to point this stuff out to you. I and, think so too, because yeah, I love them too. So the first thing I want to show you is the denoise. And I'm just going to go to each of the pages and show you guys. Now, you can download trials of this and try out for free. So um, if you want a code, I can give you a code. I think I have 10 bucks off, something like that. I'm not sure. Um, but we'll, mm -hmm. we'll get links if you need them. But if you can look at this shot, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Um, I have super tech on my computer that allows me to zoom in that much. That's it. But you can see on this image, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. and this is a before and after of an actual image. But I mean, you can see how much wow. 
that it clears up that image but doesn't mush out any of the details in that building. Yes. A lot of yes. times when we denoise, we see mushiness. And I'm thinking, Everywhere. man, in yeah. macro, this is going to be super cool. Because, oh, yeah. you know, if you have anything with noise, I mean, look at the difference. Look at that. I mean, it's just, oh, wow. just crazy good. Um, and here, extreme example. And look at how it didn't even really touch the background noise. It left that because it's background. This is where the AI comes in. It knows yeah. the difference knows between your subject and your background. Look at the logo, the Jaguar logo on the front of the car becomes yeah, a logo really you can identify. Yes. yes. I mean, incredible. So, cool. so that's the... Yeah, that's so I use yeah. the denoise. I really like that a lot. I also mm -hmm. use... Um, now, I've always used the mask program when I was doing... Uh, composites and things for my studio i don't really use it anymore but it's still just as good as it ever was um so that was a very a very good program the other one that i use is sharpen in this program um if they sh i hope they show a demonstration of the um how it stabilizes your camera i love that everything's ai now you know they got it so computerized that it helps us uh create better you know like if we messed up like you said and you're out there photographing something, you know, you're going to, especially critters, you know, and you can't, you're right. not going to be able to get that critter again. I mean, here's oh, a no way. Look at that. Right. Here's, here's a picture. <laughs> I need to go back to Topaz. Here's Dang. a woman that was basically moving quite quickly for street photography. And that's a bug right there. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, I mean, just incredible. Here's a bird flying super fast. Very, very cool. Love it. Love it. Look at this. Yeah. It Look clears the, the image. Mm-hmm. So just amazing to me. Um, so here's some macro for you. So they do actually show show you. So it's better focus oh. correction. So look at this. I mean, look at the oh, difference. Here's yeah. before. Mm-hmm. And here's after. <laughs> Yeah. Let's look at and the spider. And I have all the Topaz, too, because I'm an affiliate also, but I didn't realize that they had fixed that sharpening yeah. better. This is much better than when I, when right. I used to use this it. This one's going to amaze you. Look at this. Check out the spider. Look at the abdomen and the, and the eyes, right? Check, uh -huh. check this out. This is before. That's after. Oh, wow. Yes. Yep. And this is these aren't doctored images. Do you, you, do you use download, them, too? D download these and try them yourself absolutely oh, amazing software yeah it's, Stuart's saying that he'd be surprised in how much it can clear up an image but not that much out of spider hairs oh interesting see that's what Stuart. you could talk about that in, in next month <laughs> so the final one that i just want to mention really quick is gigapixel and this one comes into play with what we were talking about earlier janice with yep. when you're enlarging things so mm -hmm. Sorry, I had to cough. Um, <laughs> Pork. <laughs> so the interesting thing about this is they have this for video and they have it for just standard uh, for photos as well. So they actually can enlarge videos and, and make oh. a video, for, take a video from an SD and make it into an HD or a 4K video. It's pretty impressive. We've already used it for a few clips of ours to make them to bring out some details that we couldn't even see before. So the whole thing of, you know, enhance, enhance, that's a real deal now. And um, th <laughs> what makes this different from just making pixels larger and using um, the, like the next neighbor math to say, okay, well, if this one is this color and the next neighbor is this color, then the one in between should be this color and this size. They don't do that at all. This takes basically cloud-based storage images looks for details and images all over the world and then is able to map them in and correct images and fix things when you enlarge them so it puts oh, back wow. detail that normally wouldn't be there so it's the power of mm -hmm. of this type of of computing um i don't think that we need to play a video although you guys can go here and watch this but yeah, here, we'll put here, the link below or something yeah so whatever. here's here's a good example let's let's do a a macro image so here it is at standard resolution mm -hmm. and then here it is enlarged right yeah so all mm -hmm. where you have all that pixelization there yeah it made you, it nice right you would wow. be able to blow these i mean look at the detail in the faces that's great wow that's really that's better than on one i think 
Um, well, it, and, it, and the thing is, is that Topaz is using AI computing in order to uh, do this. Google started this kind of stuff. I mean, mm-hmm. look at look at the site. I mean, this is just this is from your neck of the woods. I think I think this yeah, is off is. Highway One somewhere. So could even be my image. No, I'm yeah. just <laughs> um, but yeah, you guys need to go and check out the videos. Check out um, yeah. the stuff on on this. Um, and if you need a link, um, I'll provide one for Janice uh, for you guys. Uh, and I'm sure she has links too. But yeah, it's absolutely yeah, no, no, can, absolutely amazing stuff. And I think um, if you're doing macro, I really mm-hmm. think. This allows you to, you know, if you don't have a macro lens, it allows you to get as close as you possibly can, say a foot away from something, and then blow it up and crop it, and you're still going to have a, you know, 20 megapixel image. It's See, just that's cool. it's incredible. That is so cool. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Let's go ahead. We're going to only be able to do arts. Okay. Um, so I'm sorry, Baz. I'm sorry, Baz. But you, we promise, I promise next feedback you will be first All right. with your images. But we're getting close. And I always like to keep the uh, the show an hour. Gotcha. So we, we will definitely go to Baz and I will, I mean, not Baz, I'm sorry. We're going to go to art. And then, Baz, I promise, I promise. <laughs> All right. We'll switch over to the screen share. <laughs> yes, and I'll go. get rid of my window and look at your window because your window uh, is now, much nicer yes, than mine. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and you know what? I'm so excited about Art because he really loves to challenge and do different things. So he says that he's always looking for new items to photograph. Um, sitting on my desk were mm-hmm. some quarters. I wanted to photograph them uh, um, close up. Mm-hmm. He used a 100 millimeter with a 3.5 macro lens. He has a full frame lens mm-hmm. on a full frame lens on a crop sensor body. Got it. Got it. The lens was purchased and used. It's a ProMaster Spectrum 7. Um, when stopped down to F8, it is extremely sharp and it's over 10 years old and only cost him $50 rock on i love that he says he has a sony a77 lens pro master spectrum 7 photographed f8 at 1 100th of a second iso 80. so he used a flash off on the he's flash used off camera to the Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. with a flag on it to keep the light off the background okay which is a black piece of black construction paper um he says his flash was set um, off of oh he used his his flash set off used a twenty five dollar radio trigger and receiver sure. so his flash was um, and I don't know how to say this Yogunuo Young 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 Nuo Young Nuo yeah yes there Young Nuo that's it five, I have six, I have the same flashes yeah. yep. oh okay awesome five, yeah the five sixties are awesome. Yeah, he has a 562, and, and his cost of his flash on eBay was $45. Yep. I love bargains, man. This is so cool. Uh, being retired on a fixed in- income, he tries to look for bargains. We'll always share them with us because that's this is really cool. Those are um, not – the, the thing is, is that they're only bargain in price. The Young Nuo flashes are – I hate to say this, but they're Canon flashes. They're exactly the same. If you look oh. at the Canon flashes, they're just relabeled. Oh, wow. Really? <laughs> oh, oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah. So he says that his uh, he uses Lightroom Classic, Topaz Sharpen, and Nick. Topaz Sharpen. Woohoo! Woo-hoo. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. And Nick Software, which is woohoo. I love Nick. Um, and Silver Effects Pro. Uh, use these image. If Oh, then he just says use them if we want to. Well, I want to. See, <laughs> because I love to have such a variety of macro stuff here, which is a lot of fun. Um Silver Effects so, Pro is still, in my book, still the number one black and white uh, processing software that I've ever seen. Yeah, it just, yeah. And it's just good. You click one thing and you're like, yep, that's exactly what I wanted. And it's perfect. I know. <laughs> Isn't it great? Yep. So what I'm going to do right now is I like to do this. Um, as you could talk, of, if you want to mm-hmm. um, give him some je- suggestions, I okay. found two amazing videos so i'm just going to put them in the chat okay. right now so they can click on them don't watch them you guys stay with the stay in the macro chat show i just want to give this to you guys <laughs> watch right these now. later <laughs> yes watch these later i'm going to tell you what they are in one sec but um one is and i don't know which one's which so one is a different way of shooting 
coins. Now I know how I shoot coins and the way I shoot is kind of a little bit more expensive than the way this guy did it. And he did an amazing setup that I thought, I'm going to try. I even messaged, mm -hmm. did a message and said, hey, I'm going to try this. And Stuart, that's how I found you because I just love trying new things. And he was doing this ant thing. Yeah. And so this guy, that's when I was like, Stuart, oh my gosh, can you be on my show? But anyways, <laughs> so then this, this one is about a different way of shooting. Yeah. Then the other YouTube link, which is really cool, is the thing that got triggered me was that Art said he's looking for new ways to photograph. Well, cool. I photograph a lot of coins for my hubby. Mm -hmm. So I do this a lot. But I do it, I, but when it comes to different creativity, that video was like, wow, I really love it. So cool. Art, those two videos would be really fun for you just to check <laughs> out. So I was, I, you know, I thought, why not? put them in the chat right. so go for it. what do you think what do you think there's three of them do you want me to show you all of them or do you want to just look one by well, one let's look at one let's just concentrate on this one really quick first okay. of all um black and white perfect choice there no reason to shoot this in color for any reason whatsoever because you're dealing with a substance that's metal and it's on a black background uh, so you might as well reduce it to black and white to get rid of any sort of uh color you know, in the room that might be reflecting or anything like that. So I love that choice in itself. This is a great stock photo um, mm -hmm. for maybe a money blog or, or you know, <laughs> somebody who's a financial, uh, wants it for their office, something like that. It's a perfect shot. It, I mean, it really makes a lot of sense. Um, I will say that um, I think he used maybe blue tech or something to prop the quarter up in the back, and I can see a little bit of that on the edge. I would like to see him uh, clone that yeah. out, uh, yeah, on yeah. the lower side. And I'm also looking on a calibrated monitor. And again, this is over the internet. I don't have the original files, but it does look a little bit um, overexposed as far as I can see the gradients in around the corridor going backwards. There's nothing that's truly like 100% black on my screen. And I think I would like to see the blacks fully black. Now, Janice, you have a histogram. Can you look at the histogram? Yeah, it's pretty dark, but I'm gonna go ahead and do what you're saying. Um, let me take down the, but, let me take down. Sometimes the it goes through the internet and by the time I see it, now see that, yeah, that looks whoa, a little, that's, that's too much. I'm just gonna go, <laughs> I know I'm just going all the way and then just yep. like slow bringing it up so people could see it. And let's do, oops. I'm, you know what? Yeah. Beyond that though. I mean, I love the, the, like I said, the black and white processing, the composition is good. Um, it's, you know, I, it, there's nothing that's distracting here to me uh, as far as uh, the other coins too much. Um, there are enough on their sides. The one coin that's on the left, the Louisiana uh, purchase coin, maybe I might have put a little radial filter on that and maybe blurred those out just a little bit on the edge so it didn't take away from, you know, the, the main star of the show. The rest of the coins are, are tilted or they're nicely bokeh so that I... They're not really distracting my eye at all, but the, that coin is on the same plane as the, the coin that's sitting up, and I can see it perfectly, and that makes my eye go over there and like, oh, I want to read what's on that coin because it's a coin. Oh, that's I wanna, a good tip, right? I yeah, want to look at tip. it. So you can use like a radio filter and a little bit of uh, clarity or blur uh, filter on that in Photoshop if you want to do that, um, and you can kind of give it that false bokeh out there to kind of just make it so it, it's toned down just a little bit, like the coin that's in front. I wouldn't do yeah. too much. You know, that's all it really needs. That doesn't really pull my eye at all, the other one. But um, I really like this photo. I, I was really I impressed. I think it's my favorite. Um, yeah, yeah it's out of the you – know, let's show the other photos. So, well, I want to say something real quick. Real oh, okay. Quick, real quick. Yep. So, yeah, I, I totally uh, love that he's um, – got the side shots mm -hmm. because that's how you could see everything when the light is hitting to the side right. side um because down here art and i know that see this is what's so awesome you guys as you keep sharing your images we get to know how much you know about photography and be able to push you uh you know depending on where you're at right so i really love the composition i like the you know having that up what I would do is down here at the bottom art, it's got a little mush. 
So what I probably would do is either fix it or maybe just do a small crop. Let me just see. I don't know. I haven't played with this. When oh, you originally sent the image to me on the screen that I had, it was actually cropped up a little bit and a little bit wider. So it's just oh, cropped up so from the I'm bottom. Gonna... And it really, I really like the way those three coins kind of like hold the, uh, the quarter. Mm -hmm. See how the three mm -hmm. coins are like stacked on top of each other? Yes, that These kind of right here. yeah, that that whole yes. sequence kind of creates the golden spiral there for me. Um, yeah, so I yeah. Li no, I liked I like uh, bringing it up a little bit from the bottom. I do want to mention. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. So I, that's what I would do. Um, but I like that he went ahead and did that side lighting. That was really cool. Yes. And then I probably would clean up just a little bit more, only only on detritus. The, yeah. Yes. Just a little bit, just a little bit, so like Barry, these ones right here. Barry did mention ISO 80. Um, I, th I think he was talking about. I actually, when yes. I'm using um, yes. a flash and I'm doing dark photography, um, I will usually always, always go uh, with ISO 50 or ISO 80. Yeah, I get mm -hmm. down. It's just, no chance of noise in there uh, at all. And if I need to bump anything up, which is usually the case, I usually need to bump uh, shadow up or something like that. Then I don't. Mm -hmm. Then I don't end up with uh, any noise in those shadows, yes. and that's that's kind of always important. So it's not uncommon yeah. for me to. And I always shoot down there for waterfalls or anything like that, but um, where I need the long exposure. But uh, yeah, it seems like it's a sweet spot. ISO 50 or ISO 80 for shooting yeah. stuff like this. Or you use topaz and not worry about it. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> right, right. right. Um, All right. Next image. So this one, I think. I think this one, tell us, Art, this one right here is this one, correct? And you cropped it? Because I personally like this one better than yes. this one because this one's yep. all over. I have a feeling that's what he was doing. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm okay with the crop. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think, so personally, I, I believe that this is the, the shot he yep. was working on. And then he took it to the next level. And, um, He's got I a photo liked. bomber in this shot. <laughs> There's a photo bomber. I can see it right yep. there. Yep. Right there. <laughs> and the, and the little hair. The little hair that's on the left. Oh, I see it. Photo oh, bomber. Okay. I was thinking about the glare. <laughs> yeah. Art, Art noticed <laughs> it. Right Art, Art noticed it. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's, isn't it funny how we stare at an image and work on it for so long? And then, <laughs> then you'll get, I've done that before. I've submitted to my, you know, I'll put it out on my website for sale. And then uh, I'll be reading through the story or something and making sure everything's all right. And then I'll click on something to make sure it works. And I'll be like, oh, my gosh, I didn't clear like any of the dust spots off this photo when I uploaded it. What am I doing? Um, yeah, it never fails. Oh, seriously. Yep. But you know what would have been really cool? I love this, the, what he's thinking here composition-wise. You know what would have been really fun is to actually get this right here and focus somehow. This guy right here. Because see how this... I don't know. I just love this one a lot. I mean, this one right here is where he's shooting. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can see this is his focal point right here. Right on main and the edge of the coin. Yeah. Yeah, well, that but could... it's cool. I love it. I think he did a wonderful job yeah. to play. And, um, you know, just I think it's different. Um, I love this composition. I probably would play a little bit more with trying to mess with the lighting or to um, maybe tint it a little bit or you know I think you know, I think he has on to something with the first photo I'd go black and white with this and make it a series a money series yeah Wouldn't I would be fun? yeah because yeah. I just I think that the copper banding around the edge um, mm -hmm. oh it was enlarged with gigapixel see that you didn't even know <gasps> you did? that's how good it is the one oh the other one gosh, the other one yeah. are... Well, See? hey, I did not know Gigapixel was that awesome. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, it's very good. <laughs> yeah. See, I love the way he has the uh, the grading here. And look at, look at, I pushed it back. But look, I love what this, look. See how we cropped it? Yep. In our <laughs> face. I just, you know, I guess because we're macro people. I mean, I just love <laughs> in the face. But yeah, I do. I'd I get think these up to a stock really photography good. site. I'm serious. You'll sell these photos in a heartbeat. I yes. guarantee it. Yes. There's always something yeah. that, that people need to put money on. So <laughs> It's interesting, though. You could see that this one's not black and white. You can actually see the, the, copper, the yeah. inside, the copper. That's cool, And you too. can see it on the – there's a little bit on the dime, and there's a little bit of color tinting on the, the nickel up there as well. And 
I just think if he's doing this like a series of the you know a coin series or something, I think the look that he nailed on the first one is is you know really does it for me. I I would test that out. Just test it out with the other ones and see what. what you That's think. your homework. That's your homework. Yeah. I do. <laughs> we'll go back to us. I want to show them. I want to show oh, okay. what I do. Um. So what I like to do is if you're gonna. You could do this on black too, but I, if I'm going to do white, so I use museum wax. Oh yeah. Is this how, museum wax? See, I like to use this and I just did it today. Cause I was thinking about you. Look, <laughs> oh, Kevin has coins all over the place, but see how it's holding it. It's not even falling off. <laughs> <laughs> So museum wax is really really cool. I'm and it won't. To take it won't uh, if it's a proof coin oh, too. Shoot. It won't. Uh, it won't hurt it. So. Yeah, and sometimes some of the coins that we have. Sometimes I, I have co coins with plastic on top. This, yep. I just pulled this one. So some some of the ones that have plastic on top can be really difficult to photograph. And so I just like you know what I do is I'll just I gotta wash this before. <laughs> But, Baz, Baz uh, has a good idea, a triptych of those of those coins. Yeah, that's a that's a good oh, idea yeah. too. Yeah, that yep. would be really cool too. Yes, I love it. And he'll get some good ideas too on the YouTube channel. That, yes, that I'm going to watch those videos. I can't wait. Yes, it'll be cool. All right, you guys. Well, we're past an hour, and I always try to keep it in an hour. <laughs> so I just want to thank everyone that's been here. Thank you, and you replayers, because we get a lot of replayers. And Kevin sent in a jumping spider. So, Kevin, mm. I just want you to know that I did not get your story. Why did you take the picture? So, Kevin, you've got to give me that information. <laughs> there you here. go. I, did, I feel bad because Kevin did give me uh, the jumping spider. Cool. Um, let me remind them that on the 17th, which is two weeks from now, Mitchell Wu will be here. He was, he's our guest for the month. And I'll remind you now, Stuart. Stuart is just be said here. that we need to change the show to two hours because he's a chatterbox. <laughs> we have we have another you Don Kamarechka on, on our hands. Here we go. That's that's fine. See, Stuart, we like that because seriously, we'll just like so Stuart, tell us about your photography and Janice and I'll go on a break. That's <laughs> that's how that goes. Yeah, yeah. So anyways, thank you all. And um, AD and I just totally enjoy everything, you know, with all you guys hanging out with us. It's so much fun. Um, I will say my thing. I just want you all to remember that your thousand words does make a difference. Cheers. Bye, guys. <laughs>